Hello, we are back again for the second video in this series on building a top tier security operations center. If you didn't get to see the first video, go back and check that out. But in the last video, we talked about the first function of a SOC, and that is the ability to collect data and getting it to your SOC. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the detection function, the next thing in the line. So let's get started. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to the SANS YouTube channel yet, make sure you do that so you see everything in this video series and all the other awesome stuff we post from our other instructors and summit speakers and everything else. Okay, so how does this detection stage work? The input to this stage is all the telemetry you have coming in from the environment, and that's gonna be all your log files, packet captures, and the like. And what we would like to do is be able to have evidence anytime something malicious occurs. So we need to have the right data coming in, and given that, we wanna be able to uniquely call out this is an event that might represent something bad. And we wouldn't want to overstep and call out false positives, things that shouldn't generate alerts. And we also don't want to miss anything, false negatives. So we have to walk the line between having a rule set that is just well tuned enough that it can detect the bad things, but isn't going to be overzealous or under alerting either. It's a difficult thing to do. We get this right by performing accurate detection engineering, generating of the right rules that you need to detect all this malicious activity. But how do we get that done? Well, accurate detection engineering is really a combination of two different things. The first thing we talked about in the first video in the series, and that is just having threat intelligence to know what you should be looking for in the first place. The other thing is being able to manage those rules throughout their life cycle. What does management of those rules mean? Well, we can break that down into a number of different stages. The first thing we have to consider is of all of the rules in the world we might write, which ones are we going to write? We need to create some kind of backlog when everyone has a good idea, where are we putting it? And how are we prioritizing which rules are being created in the first place? Beyond that, we have to have the rule creation stage where we're gonna have a detection engineer or maybe a SOC analyst, depending on how you do it, actually write those rules and test them and make sure they're going to identify the right thing, not identify the wrong thing, not generate false positives and all sorts of junk that makes our life more difficult. And then after those rules go into production, we have to manage how they are modified over time. Your environment's going to be changing, your logs are going to change, your network might look different over time with different subnets, different protocols being used. So although you wrote a rule that worked great at one point, it may need to be tweaked over time. And when those tweaks happen, you need to know who made those changes, when they made those changes, and what those changes were because you do not want to have a rule that is broken and no one knew it was broken. So management of the life cycle of not only the rules creation, but as it changes over time. On top of that, you need to have some kind of metrics around your rule. Tracking, traceability up to frameworks like MITRE ATT&CK, those are the other things that are gonna be really, really important for getting this right. So let's start with idea capture. At any point in time, someone on your team might have a really good idea for a rule that needs to be written. And maybe they are, or maybe they are not the person that writes that rule. But either way, we don't wanna let those ideas get away. So the first thing you wanna think about is, do you have a place where everyone can collect all of their good ideas that acts sort of as a rules to be created backlog? And then within that backlog, how can you start to prioritize what is the most important rule to be writing at any given time? You probably can't constantly write every single rule on the list. So you wanna think about how do these things align with our threat intelligence and which one should we prioritize at any given moment to be developed to make sure that we are constantly crossing off the things that present the highest risk to the SOC. One of the ways of doing that is having some kind of formalized process for building rules, whether that's a tool like a use case database that has a way to queue up a list of good ideas or any other system you wanna come up with, right? It can be as simple as an Excel sheet or OneNote or something much more advanced like Confluence or some kind of ticketing system that does this for you. No matter what it is, you always wanna make sure everyone is constantly aware of what is the best thing I can be doing right now. And in the realm of detection engineering, that's what rule should I be writing next? The next is rule creation. Do you have some kind of process wrapped around rule creation such that a new idea that is going to be written is going to be thoroughly tested? Do you need to have people doing some kind of uh, peer review or something like that to make sure the rules that you're generating are not gonna be setting off false positives? And then once you have a rule that conceivably is high quality enough to put into production, then how are you going to introduce that into the rest of the rule set and then take a snapshot and say, this is where the rule set was before, this is where the rule set is now after this introduction of a new rule, in case you need to revert back, right? We may think everything was gonna be good, but sometimes it's not. So the ability to take those snapshots can be a really great way of doing that. How might we go about that? If you're managing your rules as a set of text files, that can be as simple as GitHub, or maybe you have a tool that allows you to do this within the UI. 
No matter how you get it done, it's something that's absolutely critical for every SOC team to be able to do. So what about rule tracking and traceability up to frameworks like MITRE ATT&CK? A lot of teams now are aligning capabilities of the SOC with the things that are listed in MITRE ATT&CK, the various tactics and techniques. But can you press a button and simply get an answer to, of all of the tactics and techniques we need to be able to detect, which ones can we detect? Well, how do we make that happen? Because ideally you do want to be able to do that. The short answer to that is you should be able to track with all of the rules that you have put in place, which specific tactics and techniques they align with. And if you can do that in a way that can be programmatically accessed across the entire rule set, and then you can pull all that information out, then it should be fairly easy to extract that kind of information. And again, if you use some kind of formalized format for your rule set, let's say Sigma rules, for example, there is a field there that allows you to type in the alignment to MITRE ATT&CK's framework and say, this is a rule that catches a specific persistence mechanism. And then when you go to pull it, it's a simple pull it out of that field and then note it down. If you have a way of introducing new rules from a backlog and prioritizing which ones should be created, when they're introduced, doing thorough testing to make sure they're not gonna make a slew of false positives or miss things in a non-obvious way. And then if you can track the changes to those rules, when those changes were made and who made those changes over time, you're in a great place. The rest of it is really just managing that list and seeing, are we catching in totality the group of things we need to be able to catch? Those are the main questions we wanna be able to answer. So what we're looking for in a top tier SOC in a group that is trying to maximize their capability in this one detection function is a controlled way of capturing all the good ideas for new rules, introducing those new rules to the production data set, and then managing those rules throughout their life cycle as they change, who changed them, when did they change, how did they change, all those sorts of things. And then at any given moment, being able to look at the whole set of rules and answer, do you have the things that you need to have based on what your threat intelligence tells you is gonna be a priority. If you can get all of those things done and you have some process and metrics wrapped around that, you're in a great position to always be capturing and catching the attacks that you should be catching. So to give you a list of questions to consider specifically aligned with the contents in this video, here are some things that you can take back to your SOC and make sure you have a solid answer for. Number one, how does your SOC capture the collective list of ideas that your detection engineers or your SOC analysts may want to write? How do you prioritize that list for development if there are more things than you can handle at any given moment? Is it tied to threat intelligence or is it just the whim of whoever happens to be writing the rule? Do your engineers have the right sets of data from your collection function to be able to even write the rules in the first place? Are you getting the right kind of data to be able to write a rule that relates to any kind of telemetry that you may receive? In other words, are you getting all the logs from all your on-prem systems, all the stuff happening in the cloud? Are you getting metadata or actual packet captures from all portions of your network, on-prem and in the cloud? Can you look at individual files if you're trying to write Yara rules or something that is specifically looking for the contents, uh, byte strings, things like that in a file? What about email? Do you have the ability to write targeted detections for email? Do your engineers have the proper training to write rules for all of these different environments? Rules based on logs are gonna be very different than rules based on network traffic, which is gonna be very different from rules based on, let's say, Yara, looking for specific contents of files. And your detection engineers or your SOC analysts or whoever is writing these rules needs to be specifically trained in all of those languages if you wanna be effective at catching something in that sort of content. What is your process for testing in your rule? Are you doing both true positive and false positive testing, and ideally having another set of eyes look at that new rule before it goes into production to make sure there aren't any simple mistakes in it. If not, you might want to introduce a process around that. And then finally, how much context is available with each alert as it fires? If you know that analysts are going to have to dig up additional data to verify whether something is a true or a false positive, can you automatically produce that information and attach it to the alert and present it to the analyst right away so that they don't have to go dig and spend extra time to get it. If so, the triage step, which is our next function in the SOC, which will be covered in our next video, is gonna be much, much easier. These are the kinds of questions we need to be thinking about when we're considering detection engineering. Now, I know this was a very short video, but hopefully we've given you some things to think about here. This is incredibly important. If you do not detect that the attack is happening as early as possible in the kill chain, you're gonna have an attacker that is continuing to run through your environment, making incident response that much harder. So collection of the right data leads to hopefully accurate detection for your SOC. 
and the output of the detection function is going to be alerts that are going to go to the triage queue. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to make sure the triage function goes as smoothly as possible and analysts can quickly say there's a true positive and jump into action with very little thought and very little pause. So stick with us for the next video in this series and hope to see you then. Thank you for watching. Thank you.